As you might have seen on video on TV or on the web, sometimes certain parts of videos seem to be blurred out or um, keyed out or masked out altogether. Part of the reason for that is because we might use elements that we don't have permission to use, such as logos or things like that. Or you probably have seen videos of people being interviewed for whom don't want to show their face. And uh, they want to make sure that their face is blurred out, blurred out in the video. Now, for doing this, we can manually keyframe things. And it's it, it works well, but it's a very lengthy process. So this is the first on a series of videos where I'm going to be showing you how to auto track certain things within the program. In this case, we're going to be using mask tracking. So for that, in this video, I have a short two second clip of the girl on screen and I had green screen this from before. So this is a video when you get to the green screen in video, you're going to see how we achieve that green screen. So uh, or basically masking her out from the background. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we capture her face. Basically, that's the idea. So in order to do this, and this works well for masking of any kind, in this case, uh, the the AI within uh, After Effects actually allows you to mask, uh, to track faces within the software. So this is something very useful. We are relying on AI heavily for this. But on our end, it's literally just a matter of defining the mask. So how do we do this? Well, let me go ahead and select the clip, in this case, that clip that's on top of the stack. And then I'm going to use making sure that I select the pan tool. I want to make sure that Roto Bezier is selected so that what's going to happen is the mask that I'm going to be creating is Bezier based. And so I'm going to start on the first frame over here. I want to make sure that I am on full on the um, quality of my preview. And then I'm going to start tracking around her face. I'm going to start drawing dots, basically. And you'll notice that as I click, the mask starts getting rounded as you go. So it does recognize that you're creating busy curves, even though it doesn't give you the handles as you would expect in Illustrator or even within After Effects when you're working with shapes. But you don't have to be perfect on this. So that is a good approximation. You can go in and fine tune if you want to fine tune the mask. You don't have to. Like I said, you just need a rough approximation of the face. Not super rough, but close, uh, you know, close enough. And so with that set up, you notice that we basically created a mask in the, in the layer. The layer now has the mask in it. That's mask one. And it's set up by default to the mode of add. So I want to remove that for now. I simply need the mask. That's all I need for now. So I want to track that mask and I want to make sure that as the video progresses through the timeline, that mask selects the area that should be tracked. To do so, I want to right click on the mask um, label on the layer and from the flyout menu, say track mask. Now that opens up your tracker, which by the way, let me deselect this really quick and close the tracker so I can open it up so you can see where you can find the tracker. You'll find the tracker under window tracker. Now, by default, as you can see, if I select the layer, basically I have a set of tracking options, which we will be talking about in the next module. All of these things will be covered in the next module. But if I select the mask, you'll notice that my tracker changes to something specific. So if I right click and, tra and click track mask, that tracker window will open up and it will go directly to knowing, it, it basically the AI says, oh, okay, you have selected a, ma a facial area or a mask of, of some kind. So I want to go ahead and tr try to help you get started with that tracking. With that done, let me go ahead and click on the drop on the drop down menu for the method and you'll notice that you can track several things. Position, position, rotation, position, scale and rotation, position, scale, rotation and skew. So that position, scale, rotation and skew is very similar to what we saw in the Mocha uh, video. Um, and it basically tracks the same type of information. So all of this is available to you through the masking, through the mask tracking. But what is of interest to us is these two things at the bottom, the face tracking and the face tracking detail features. So in our case, we're just simply going to do the outline because that's what I want to track right now. So I'll select that. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and hit the play button on the tracker. You will notice that this will start playing back on the timeline and the mask will start finding and following the contour, contour of the face. You will see that at some point, the the talent smiles and you'll see that the mask expands to cover basically the entirety of the face check this out so i'll click on that 
and it literally just tracked it down as you saw. So literally, it just went ahead and followed the face. When she smiled, the track opened. Uh, the the mask actually morphed to match the actual facial expression. So that's a really, I mean, that's really good as of now. I mean, just by simply clicking on that, I got that much information out of this. So I could use that information for many things. I could replace that face if I wanted to. Uh, that's a lot more involved, of course. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to apply, say, a filter for to blur her face. So say I want to do a mosaic filter. Mosaic. So I'm going to go to my filters and my, my effects and presets window. And under the filtering... Um, Options, I'm going to start typing mosaic, and I can just go ahead and from the stylized option, I want to apply mosaic to the filter. Now, you'll notice that she, that basically she is uh, she has been masked out. That, that entire layer has been masked out. So let me go ahead and make this, let's say, um, what is the size of this clip? It's 1,200, so 1,280 divided by 20, so that I get something like this. And then for the other one, for the vertical blocks, I will be 720 divided by 20. So that gives me a good blur um, and a, uh, the actual mosaic effect that basically makes everything look like little squares. Now, that is, mask that is applied to the entire layer, but because I have a mask applied to this, I can go in and switch my masking method for that mask because it was on the mask that I applied the tracker. It does know that whatever I'm applying right now will be applied only to the area where the mask exists. So I want to change my mask mode from none to add this time. And as you can see, it basically gets added. Now, you notice that everything else disappeared, right? So let's go back to none again and go under effects, under our effects dropdown. And what I want to do at this point is uncollapse the mosaic option. And you will notice that because we have a mask in the in in the actual layer, my uh, filters now have an option at the bottom of them called compositing options. All the filters that have the ability to be composited into something will have this new option underneath them called compositing options. And what that is basically telling you is from the information that you have in the layer, there is something that I can use specifically to affect this filter. So in this case, I want to affect the mosaic. I want the mask to be used for that filter alone. So when I do that, let me go ahead and add a filter to that by pressing the plus key. And you'll notice that I now have a listing. If I had more masks, it would tell it will give me a list of all the masks that I have available. Since I only have one and it's called mask one, it's choosing that one only. So when I do that and I go back and switch my mask from none to add, it's only going to apply the filter to the area defined by the mask, which is great because it just narrows it to that portion of the, fill of the, of the mask. Now, let me deselect this and play this back. And you'll notice that basically my mask tracks her face. So it doesn't affect anything else. I can also fix this a little bit by going into the mask and perhaps feathering it a little bit so that I get a little bit more of expansion around the mask. And so that it looks a little bit more natural. And there it is. So this is how you track masks inside After Effects. Like I said, you have many options based on the type of tracking that you're trying to do. If this was a logo, you might have chosen chosen position and rotation, for example, or position, rotation, and skew. Uh, skew sorry. And those will actually create uh, the actual keyframes for you following and transforming your mask accordingly. Now, this is not a one stop, one, one shot deal. This, this, uh, you might have to do this several times. You may actually have to track your clip in several batches. But as you do, you'll notice that it makes it a lot easier than actually track, uh, you know, trying to create a mask per frame in a clip that could be, let's say, 10 seconds long or 20 seconds long. That would take forever and a half to do, almost like rotoscoping by hand. So, um, Mask, mask tracking is an extremely useful tool within your filter arsenal.